Lots of rocks. No old Civil War pistols yet though, which is, you know, obviously the goal. Not that a lot of Civil War battles were fought in Upper Washington. Hmm. Hello everyone, I'm walking across the country and documenting the whole thing. Whether you've been here before or this is your first time... Welcome to Walk America! That's it! Day 74 started in the green woods just outside the small community of New London on US Highway 101. With few communities within a day's walk, the plan was simply to enjoy the scenery of a place I'd never been before and get a little closer to the point where I'd be turning around and heading east, Cape Alava. At this point, less than a week's worth of walking away. One of the best things about traveling on foot is you never know what you're going to find while walking. I was just looking at the water. Wish them luck. The road will provide. There's like four starbursts left in here. Sweet finds. After finding my own version of manna from heaven, I continued on towards the small community of Hump Tulips, population about 250. We're not the only ones to think it has an odd name, as it often features on lists of places with unusual names. It comes from a Native American word meaning hard to pull, referring, referring to travel on the nearby river. Additionally, well-known author Terry Pratchett of the Discworld series has said that it is his favorite place on planet Earth, so maybe it should be on your list of destinations. That is mesmerizing. I found this uh, magnet the other day. It's attached to this rope. Magnet fishing is what I think they call it. So I've been waiting to get to like a cool river to see if I can do some magnet fishing and find some interesting stuff. But this river is so clear that I can tell that there's no metal at the bottom. <laughs> but I'm gonna swing it over anyway. Lots of rocks. Fast. Does this mean there's iron in the rocks? It's not a strong attraction. No old Civil War pistols yet though, which is, you know, obviously the goal. Not that a lot of Civil War battles were fought in Upper Washington. Probably get back to walking now. Gotta get to Cape of Lava at some point or another. Back on the road. That was Joe's car here in, uh, I can't imagine any other way to pronounce this town, Hump Tulips. That's exactly how it's spelled. And then I was walking down the road and comes chasing after me with a bottle of cold or orange juice. Joe was a very nice man. I like Joe. Thank you, Joe. Once again refreshed by the bounty around me, I continued learning about the area's unique history. So you see this forest right here. You can tell the trees aren't that thick, meaning they're not that old. So there's a sign right there. It says clear cut in 1910, clear cut again in 1986, and then this forest that we're looking at right now was planted in 1987. So this kind of tells you how long it takes. Oh, I almost just uh, tripped on the asphalt. This is 33 years worth of growth. I actually was looking it up the other day, the amount of what they call old growth or virgin forest, stuff that was just planted by nature before uh, European settlers mostly cut down most of the forests that used to 
make up a lot of the western United States or Canada. There are still some pockets, but it's kind of sad how much has been just cut down. You don't see very many of just ancient trees anymore, except for in the really wild parts. The more you know. Megusta trees. Continuing on, I arrived at the Olympic National Forest, just outside the Olympic National Park, which dominates the Olympic Peninsula. Nilton has no food like cooked food. Despite the lack of amenities to alleviate my hunger, the experiences that you have more than make up for it. Yesterday I was walking through Aberdeen. I was walking west until I could catch this road, which is Route 101. Headed north because I randomly, pretty arbitrarily picked uh, Cape of Lava as my westernmost terminus of my walking route. Anyway, but people on the street, there was quite a few of them. It happened probably uh, four or five times. Where people would read my sign which says, Coast to Coast, Walk in America. And they saw me headed west and they knew we were in Aberdeen. They're like, you're almost there, keep going, man. And I was like, thanks, but I'm going to Maine. I'm not almost there. Not even close. It was kind of uh, inspiring though. I think that'll be a fun day when slash if I get to that lighthouse in Maine. As the sun started to set, I was treated to yet another beautiful evening in the Pacific Northwest. With the light quickly fading, it was time to begin the nightly tradition of finding a place to sleep. In these forested states, like Washington and Oregon, there are these clear-cut paths through what would normally be dense forests, and that's to accommodate the power lines. So you can see them sort of crisscrossing the state if you zoom in. It'll be dense forests, and then you'll just see this strip of light green that follows all the power lines. I've been tempted to use them before because the forests here are so dense that there's, it'd be impossible to walk my cart into it and set up a tent and plus spooky. But usually I find some sort of nook closer to the road. But uh, as I've gotten up into this Olympic Peninsula, all the little nooks have our roads themselves, but they all have like gates that say no trespassing, don't come in here, etc. This is one of the few roads I've walked by that doesn't have a gate doesn't have any signs so I felt okay walking the quarter mile to I noticed this strip following the power lines so I'm gonna see if I can camp here I think I'm going to because it's 9 12 which means I've got like 15 to 20 minutes of decent life left at this point I'm just looking at spots on Google Maps where it looked like there was clear bits because there's still quite a bit of shrubbery I wouldn't be able to set my tent up in that very easily it looked like this is the spot that it was showing on Google Maps, but that's not great. So I'm going to go to the other spot I found down the road that is not on the road itself, like here. I could camp here, but if anybody did happen to need access to this road in between now and when I leave tomorrow morning at like 8-ish, I'm sure they wouldn't be pleased by my presence on the road itself. Found a camp spot to camp for tonight that's still the hardest thing actually I don't usually start thinking about it until like 8 but then I'm like oh I need to find somewhere to put my weary body for the evening and it's still just kind of vulnerable probably the best term I'm gonna make sure I read my can of bear spray tonight instructions so I know how to access it quickly if need be it's best to be prepared Hey everyone, I hope you've enjoyed another episode in the journey. Consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, following me on Instagram if you like this kind of content, or helping me continue by contributing financially. Links to do any of those things can be found in the description below.